Okay, this is going to be the second of two videos on how to make rough sketches of the second derivative graph. And in the first video, um, if you haven't done it yet, I would suggest that you watch it. Um, but in that video, we only used first derivative information to make a sketch of the second derivative graph. And it was a two-step process. And in this video, what we'll do is how to show uh, how to use second derivative information, uh, which will eliminate the middle step. Uh, but let's go ahead and first of all, it's I think it's handy to compare these two methods. So let's just go ahead and real quickly run through what that first derivative method looked like again. So first of all, you had an original graph, and we'll put that right here. So this is the original graph, it's y. Then, um, and I would suggest you line up these three graphs vertically. On this graph, we'll put a graph of the first derivative, and then this is what we really want down here. This will be a graph of the second derivative. Now again, Let's just repeat those steps just to show, again, quickly how to get a, a sketch of this thing using first derivative information. And what we did in that first video, the first thing we did was we identified the critical points. So we found horizontal tangents, one right here. This was a critical point. Um, we had a horizontal tangent right here. This was a critical point. And we had a horizontal tangent right here. This was a critical point. So we found three critical points. Then you came down on this first graph, and directly below each critical point, where you have a critical point, the derivative is equal to zero. So that means this first derivative graph is going to go through zero right here. Straight down from this one, it'll go through zero right here. And straight down from this one, it went through like this. Again, that divided it up into three intervals. So let's just go ahead and put some intervals on here. We'll go, say, from here um, down to here. So there's first interval. Um, then, say, from here to here. Um, and finally, another interval from here down, say, to here. So I wound up these. Now, that actually gives you four intervals. So what's going on in each one of these intervals? And again, what we did in that first graph is the original function is decreasing, which means its uh, slope or its derivative is negative. So when you sketch this graph, it was below the axis. So we'll go ahead and make a quick sketch. It looks something like this. So this one was negative. Now, in this interval here, the original graph has a positive slope. Uh, so this graph will be above the axis. So it would go up, say, something uh, kind of like this. It'll go up to here, and it goes down like this. But it's positive all in through this interval. Then in this interval, uh, the original graph, the slope of the original graph was negative. So this one goes back below the axis. So it might look something, say, like this, goes down and came back up like this. So it was negative in this interval. And then finally, in this last interval, uh, the slope of the original graph was positive. It goes above the axis. Uh, so the first derivative graph would look something like that. Then to find the second derivative, and again, this is what's called a step one. So this is a two-step process. So step one was to plot the first derivative graph. Then to get the second derivative graph, all we did is just pretend that this graph was the original graph and repeat the process. So again, just assuming that this was the original graph, let's first of all get the critical points again. We'll just repeat exactly the same process. So in this case, we've got a horizontal tangent about right here. So there's a horizontal tangent. That will be a critical point. I'll go straight down from there, and this graph has got to have uh, hit the x-axis right there. Now again, this one seems to have a horizontal tangent. We'll say it's about right there. Go straight down from here, and again, uh, it's the x-axis right there. So just repeating the same process. Now again, that divides it up into three intervals. So you've got an interval from here to here, another one uh, from here to here, and then finally a third one from here to here. So repeating the same process in this first interval, um, this curve, right, just looking at this green graph, this green graph has a positive slope, so this thing is going to be above the x-axis. The graph in here would be above the x-axis, positive. Then, um, in this interval from here to here, uh, the graph of the, the green, the slope of the green graph is negative, so it drops below the x-axis. It might drop down something, say, like that, and it was negative down in here. And finally, in this last interval, from here over to here, the graph, the slope of the uh, derivative graph was positive. It went back above this axis, and it would go up, say, something like this. And you end up, here was a graph of the second derivative. So that was what we're going to call 
that's step two. And actually, you'd be done. This little graph down here is a graph of the second derivative, and it was a two-step process. And again, in this method, if you follow this method, you only used information, first what I call first derivative information, and critical points. Now, what we're going to do in the second method is this. Suppose, um, rather than using first derivative information and having a two-step process, you'd like to use second derivative information and go directly uh, to the last step and skip this first step. So let's see what that would look like. So we'll go ahead and turn this off and we'll start the process again. Now again, what we want to do is to skip this second step. We want to go directly to that. And again, this time we'll use first derivative information. Or pardon me, second derivative information. Okay, now again, in the first method you were concerned with critical points uh, where you had a horizontal tangent. In this method, um, what you're going to be concerned with is where the graph is concave up and down and inflection points, which is all second derivative information. So again, what we'll have is this is still going to be um, the graph of the second derivative, but this time we'll go directly and skip that first step. So the first thing to do is to identify the inflection points. Now the inflection points are where it changes concavity. See, looking at your original graph, and I always like to do this. I put these little hairs, what I call hairs on the graph, because it helps me visualize where these inflection points are. So the idea is this graph is decreasing, uh, but it's actually concave up in this interval. So I show that the graph is curving up by putting these little red hairs, and hopefully this will help you visualize what they're like. And I would suggest maybe try this and it might work for you. So my graph is concave up or curving up all the way in through here, and then like this. Uh, and it's kind of a guess about where it is. I'm going to say it continues curving up until it gets, and I'm going to say to right there. So what that is, this thing right here is an inflection point. I'll call it an IP. So rather than a critical point down here, we're going to work with inflection points up here. Now clearly this graph is concave up, so I'll put CU. And what that does, that gives me an interval, and let's go ahead and just write that on there, uh, from here, and I'm going to go from here all the way down to the bottom of this graph. So let's just say it looks something, oh, maybe like that. So it divides it up into that interval. Now, suddenly the, the original graph switches from concave up. Now it switches to concave down. And you just go around until you estimate where the next inflection point is. And again, kind of a guess about where it is. And I'm going to say it's about right there. And at this point, it's concave down in this entire interval. So this is, we'll call this one CD for concave down. And again, divides it up into an interval. So let's do the same thing. We'll put a a line all the way down the page. So it'll go, say, from here to about right here. So here is a concave down interval. And then finally, in this third interval, it switches back to concave up. And again, I'm going to use these little hairs to indicate that it's concave up from there on out. So concave up all in here. So I've got concave up here. Now, you might remember from your previous work that um, where the graph is concave up, uh, the graph of the second derivative is positive. So if the second derivative is positive, the original graph is concave up. Or if the uh, original graph is concave up, then the second derivative is positive. So what that means is wherever the original graph is concave up, the graph of the second derivative is above the x-axis. So it's going to look something like this, and it's going to be positive in this interval. Then. Whenever the graph of the original function is concave down, the graph of the derivative, uh, pardon me, the graph of the second derivative is negative. It's below the x-axis. So this thing's going to drop below the x-axis, say something like that, and it's going to be negative in this interval. And then finally, where the original graph is concave up, the graph of the second derivative is positive. It's above the x-axis, so it might go up something like that, and it's going to be positive above here. So notice what this is. This is, I'd call this, a one-step process. It's actually a little bit quicker. And you still wind up with a rough graph. So again, if you're working with second derivative information, the idea is to locate the inflection points uh, where it switches from concave up to concave down, where it changes concavity. Divide that up into intervals. Where the original graph has an inflection point, the second derivative graph right here goes through zero. You'll have a point right there and right there. Then in each interval, if the original graph is concave up, 
the second derivative is above the x-axis. If the second derivative is concave down, then the original graph is below the x-axis. And then finally, back to concave up, and it does this. So what this does, it's a second method of sketching second derivative graphs, but you go directly from the original function to the second derivative, and the advantage is that you don't have to sketch the first derivative first. But they should still give you the same information. Now let's do this. Let's put both uh, methods on at the same time. So if you put them both up here, and again, let's go ahead and at this point, let's take off this one, just to remind you. In the, if you're working with first derivative information and critical points, it's a two-step process, and you wind up getting this green graph right here. It's an easy method, nothing wrong with it. It's just a one good, very good way of doing it. But another option is to use the second derivative information, and let's do that. And it looks like this. If you use the second derivative information, rather than working with critical points, you work with inflection points uh, and concavity. And you also get this. Now, if you put the two graphs together, you'll see you'll wind up getting, notice down here, the red graph and the green graph, they may not be exact because it's just a rough sketch anyway, but they're going to be pretty close together. So the question is, which method is best? And it just whichever one you like best. If you like working with um, two steps and only the first derivative information, then do that and it'll, you'll get a great graph. Or if you like working with one step and second derivative information, <clears throat> then do it like this and also you'll get it. But both of them will give you exactly the same process. So again, in this method, it was all second derivative information. So now you know two methods of sketching a second derivative graph.